I have been sucked down the 80s crime drama TV rabbit hole. Um, I recently switched my television provider, and with the new provider, they gave me all these new channels like uh, Hero and uh, Cozy and Get TV. And all they play all day are all the shows I watched growing up or the shows I wanted to watch and my parents wouldn't let me. Magnum P.I., obviously. Simon and Simon. Hunter. Uh, Renegade. Uh, Rockford Files. I mean, I, I, it's all I watch. And I, 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 you know, I lay in bed and I turn the TV on or I turn the TV on in the living room. And all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, it's four hours later. And I've watched like four episodes of the Rockford Files, which I can't get enough of that stuff. It's just all the classic. I like the clothing. I like the cars. I like the guns the guys use. A lot of snubbies. A lot of, you know, 38 snubbies. That was the big gun back then. Because we're, we're talking, you know, mid to late 70s. But it was just all the shows. And sometimes it's cheesy and you laugh. But it was just such good television. I remember, you know, growing up, like... I think Magnum P.I. came on on Thursdays or Fridays. I can't remember which day. But I remember, you know, being at my grandmother's house and they had the big console TV on the, you know, it sat on the floor. And you had to look at the TV guide to find out when, you know, the show was coming on or if it was going to be a rerun. And, you know, you'd pop popcorn. It was like a big freaking deal, you know. And I think people just take that shit for granted now, you know, because they just have access to it at any point. They can, they, you know, they can just look up things. Or but I remember growing up, you know, certain television shows like every week it was a big deal. You know, everybody sat around. I'd lay on the floor and watch it, and um, it was just good times. You know, back when the human race wasn't losing their collective freaking minds, and people were still relatively decent to each other. You know. Um, Anyway, that tangent's over. I'm doing a gun review. Sorry. This is a Ed Brown review. Um, I love Ed Brown 1911s. I always have. Um, I remember seeing them in the magazines, um, you know, growing up in combat handguns and American handgunner and guns and ammo. Every once in a while, you'd find, you know, an Ed Brown ad, and it'd be usually be for like a Cobra Carry or a Special Forces. I actually have a Cobra Carry right here. Um, I love the Cobra Carry. I'll do a video on that some other day um and Ed, they are always so clean looking compared to some of the other gun manufacturers when all the other manufacturers were into the tactical look wilson combat to a degree nighthawk um you know they're doing threaded barrels and you know all this you know tactical serrations and stuff like that and Ed brown was never really into that they've always kind of just built clean 1911s um classic 1911s now in more recent years they've ventured out a little bit you know every company has to kind of keep up but i still feel like the bread and butter and probably 80 percent of their business is just classic looking 1911s now back then the big model for them was the, like i said the cobra carry and the special forces and the special forces was kind of like wilson's version of the cqb it was kind of their flagship model and um, I, I wanted one of those forever and I never got one, obviously back then I didn't have a lot of money going to school and stuff like that. But I told when I'm finally able to order my first real nice 1911, I'm getting an Ed Brown and that's what I did. And I ordered this gun that I'm about to show you to my specs at the time. And my specs haven't really changed to be honest with you. Um, so here it is. Let's, let's, uh, do the big unveil, eh? Uh, Ed Brown, government, 45. Um, I don't remember the year I ordered this, but uh, it was a while back, and I got all the little things that I thought I wanted on 1911 at that point. And um, I guess I will start from the top to the bottom. Um, so gold bead front you'll see that that is a reoccurring theme in my 1911s i had the top serrated um, i got the tactical ledge rear 
The checkering is the skip line checkering, which is no longer offered by Ed Brown. They don't offer this uh, anymore, which is a shame. I really liked this pattern. I thought it looked really good. Um, and it feels really good in the hand, too. Um, I had the slide stop recessed. I had the barrel recessed and crown, and I had my initials placed on the uh, bushing. They, I don't know if they still allow you to do that or not, but it used to be an option. And I had them do that. Uh, let's see what else. One piece magwell, fit and blended. So that's how I did that. Two tone, obviously, with the black slide, black trigger. Um, well, ambi safety, obviously, on the lefty. So I had the ambi safety placed on. Um, this gun has been a good companion for me. It really has. It's been through classes. It's been through, I've carried it at work. Um, it's just been a good old friend for my first real true custom 1911 um i've had i can't give you an, an accurate round count on this gun it's over easily i can comfortably say and I, I feel like people always you know like to you know exaggerate their round counts but this gun's probably got eight thousand rounds through it maybe nine thousand um and I've had two issues with it. One, uh, my plunger tube started working loose. And two, I have had, I think, two stovepipes where the, bra the brass comes up. Other than that, I don't think I've had any issues with this gun. I can't ever remember like a round not going into battery or anything. Um Granted, most of the, the diet this thing's ate has been, you know, just standard 230 grain hardball. Um, but it gets a little bit of 185s. And the hollow points I use are usually the uh, Winchester. I can't remember the name of the actual actual model number or whatever you want of the ammo. But uh, it's sometimes Winchester and it's uh, 230 grain. So that's what I carry. Gun just feels good in the hand. It's just a classic 1911, man. Like a five inch, all steel, no rails. Um, I did get the ball cuts, which I always like. Um, and it's just been a really good friend to me. Um, you should develop relationships with your guns, right? And me and this one have a really good relationship. I, it's never going anywhere. I would never sell it. Um, Ed Brown has, you see people dogging on him online. Um, it all started with that jackass at uh, Weapons Education who got butt hurt because Ed Brown wouldn't talk to him at SHOT Show. I think that was what the reason. It was something like that. And he started spouting all this shit about they're a terrible company and don't buy Ed Brown products, blah, 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 blah. And I don't know if that really hurt them at all. I, I'd be surprised if it did, but you'd be surprised on the forums, the people that just regurgitate that shit. Like, oh, Ed Brown's an asshole. I would never buy his gun. Uh. I don't care what a person's, uh, like, what they're like in their private life if they build a quality product. I don't let stuff like that determine my my buying choices, one doesn't play into the other's hand to me. Um, I don't, I've never gotten that line of thinking. I think people just look for reasons to bitch or reasons to say that my brand A is better than your brand B because your brand A's owner is an asshole. I don't get the, I don't get the line of thinking in that. Um, Ed Brown has always built really good guns in my opinion um the only thing that they've done that i don't like is they got rid of their bluing which ed brown used to have one of the most beautiful bluings of any 1911 maker it was just, it reminded me you know it was right up there with like the old colt bluing you know like the old pythons and stuff like that and they got rid of it and i don't know why but uh you know what are you gonna do now they're stainless their stainless is second to none. I think if you want to order a stainless 1911, I believe that Ed Brown stainless is the best. It's not a high gloss, 
you know, mirror polished, you know, polished, high polished stainless. I'll just pull the Cobra carry out because that's an all stainless gun. The Ed Brown stainless. It's like a matte stainless. It's it's kind of dull, but it's just really well executed. And in my opinion, there's not a better stainless than the Ed Brown stainless. We'll talk about this gun in another, maybe the next video. Um, the Cobra Carry, it's iconic. If you're a 1911 addict, like, and you lean towards some of the nicer stuff, this needs to be in your pile. This is like the Glock 19 of 1911s, in my opinion. You know, everybody says, you know, you got to have Glock 19 in your pile. Well, you got to have a Cobra Carry in your pile. It's iconic. So, I like Ed Brown's. Um, I've just always liked the clean, subtle lines they do. Um, I don't get into a lot of other stuff um, as far as, you know, I don't need ports and all this other crap on my barrels, you know. I enjoy, you know, some top of slide serrations and some ball cuts, but I like to keep my 1911s, you know, just kind of with an old school feel maybe a little bit. Um, and as you'll see on this, I got zero uh, slide markings on this side because I don't like a lot of slide markings. And on this one, I just kept the uh, custom by Ed Brown right there. And uh, let's see if we can. There we go. Custom by Ed Brown. It's hard to see with this black slide. And I got a light bulb out in my room. I probably should have <laughs> changed that before I did the video for better lighting. But, well, what the fuck? I'm just uh, winging it here. So... At any rate, there we go. Ed Brown, Government 1911. If you guys are thinking about an Ed Brown or you're interested in an Ed Brown, um, I've nothing. I've always had nothing but excellent customer service from them. Um, they've always taken really good care of me, and I don't see that changing. I mean, everybody has horror stories. People have horror stories dealing with Wilson or Nighthawk or ACW. There's going to be exceptions to the rule, but um, these companies, when you're paying this type of money for guns for the most part typically are going to take care of you so um if you're on the fence about buying a nicer 1911 or anything like that take that into effect because if you buy a kimber or a t-sauce or whatever i don't i mean i don't know is their customer service good i don't know are they going to bend over backwards when you're paying 450 dollars for a 1911 probably not so that's at least something you get with the money you spend um anything else i don't think so um i've missed i miss the old youtube channels where it's kind of like what i'm doing where it's just a guy sitting at the bench just talking no cheesy intros with music and fireworks and um no stupid just bullshit I don't even know how to describe it. I just like the videos where it's like a guy in his basement talking about his experiences with the guns and giving you a true assessment of them. And uh, I've always enjoyed the uh, the old 1911. He still kind of does that to a degree, but he's gone on this revolver kick and he's kind of lost me because I'm just not a wheel gun guy. So uh, if he goes back to making 1911 videos, I'll be into it. He did make a Gen 3 Smith video the other day, which was cool because I like Gen 3 Smiths. Um, I like Bat Jack JW. He's always been a good uh, video watcher. I enjoy watching his videos every Saturday. Um, his He and my wife would get along because my wife is a horror movie uh, aficionado. And she collects, she's been to like 1,300 conventions and has autographs with every single person who's ever been like Jason or Freddy. And I think she has like over 13,000 horror DVDs and like 3,000 horror VHSs. That's what she does. That's all she collects. And uh, she's got some rare shit. So I know Bat Jack's kind of into the horror stuff. So um, what other channels do I really enjoy? Machine Gun Dad, I think it's called. He kind of uh, cracks me up and does some stuff that I enjoy. Um, I'm trying to think of other channels. I don't know. There's some other ones. I used to like Pete at the Armory channel. When he did gun reviews and just kind of ranted, I always enjoyed his videos. But now that he's gotten into the holster making side of it, he doesn't really uh, talk about guns that much anymore. In fact, hold on, I got... Oh, where did I put them? 
I ordered a couple of Heat Peaks holsters. Let's see if I can uh, find them. I don't know where I put them off the top of my head. Um, oh, I think I found them. Yep, yeah, here we go. So here is one of Pete's holsters. Obviously, I'm left-handed, so this is for a lefty. Um, and this is for a commander, but we'll throw the Ed Brown in there just to show how it fits. Just to show you how it fits here. So that's one of Pete's holsters I ordered. Holds the... Uh, use this in classes it works really well like it's it's a good holster the guy knows what he's doing i'm not going to uh, begrudge him at all um it was worth every penny and then i've got a uh, spare double mag holder here that he made that matches it so um if any of you guys are wondering about pete's holsters does a great job and i think i got the holster and the mags holder and i think it was like 110 dollars so which i think is a good deal i mean Never had any issues with them. They've done good in classes and all that crap. So that's all I can ask for. Um, angle that back. All right. So I'm about done here. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll do the Cobra carry uh, maybe next time. Or i got to do some Berettas or something else. So have fun. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I am out, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.